Hello and a warm welcome to Fun of Flying. A couple of weeks ago one of my viewers contacted me regarding a multiplexer video that I posted in November 2021 and was asking if I could produce another video this time on the subject of SSD 1306 displays. Now at that stage I had absolutely no idea what an SSD 1306 display was let alone being able to produce a video on one. So I set off to find out more about it. And following a bit of research, I quickly established that this kind of display was, in fact, uh, something that could be operated with a suitable Arduino sketch code. Although the question still remained, could this sketch code be adapted and linked to a flight simulator? Well, in my quest to find out, I instantly came up against a number of almost insurmountable hurdles, as always with these things, which resulted in a lot of trial and error on my part before I eventually produced a workable solution. Before we get into that, however, let's dive straight in and see what I managed to do. Okay, so I've loaded up a Cessna Skyhawk 172 into uh, X-Plane 12 um, and I've just loaded a, a less complicated aircraft to keep this whole thing as simple as possible. Um, if we just dismiss the yoke for a minute and I'm going to start the engine shortly. Uh, but just by way of explanation in the video over there you'll see the three um, SSD 1306 displays and I've called on three data refs from X-Plane just, uh, just for demonstration purposes that being the oil temperature, the oil pressure and the engine RPM speed here. So if I start the engine and we'll see what happens fuel pump, veto heat. Um, now at the moment the uh, displays uh, for the oil pressure is zero, uh, engine speed zero, and the oil temperature is obviously just uh, ambient temperature uh, for now. Uh, so if we start this engine, there we are. Put the alternator on so it doesn't die. Okay, so you can see the oil pressure uh, has gone up to 81. The oil temperature is increasing, and will go up to well over 100 degrees and the engine speed is currently around 1100 rpm. Uh, if we increase the engine speed a bit, now you can see the engine speed data ref value fluctuating there. Um, <coughs> excuse me, and as far as I can make out it's nothing to do with the circuit that I've built, the displays themselves, it's more to do with the data ref value output from X-Plane because when I look at the data ref editing tool uh, that value does fluctuate in there as well so it's a bit of a strange one that um, I'll have to try and look into that a bit more deeply later on okay so we can see the uh, oil temperature is now 130 132 oil pressure is just shy of uh, 84 psi oil temperature is in degrees centigrade by the way and uh, engine speed is uh, 2100 rpm and stable oh. No, just a bit of a flicker there but I'm prepared to put up with a little bit of a fluctuation in the data ref value um, it's not doing it all the time uh, and it's perfectly good as far as this project is concerned okay so we'll just uh, pull the throttle back get rid of that message always get there in the Cessna Skyhawk don't know why so engine uh, speed is settled down around 500 rpm oil pressure is dropped down from 80 to 42 and the oil temperature um, will stay around what it is it might might or it is actually decreasing slightly okay so uh, that proves to me that everything works now the next question I guess is how did I do it well initially there were a number of things that I had to do uh, which seemed simple enough at the time but of course they weren't simple at all Namely, one, I had to design a wiring circuit linking all three SSD 1306 displays to a suitable microcontroller. Number two, I had to write a basic 
Arduino sketch code so that all three displays could be addressed and communicated with completely independently of one another and I can tell you that that was a major challenge right there and number three I had to adapt my basic sketch code and incorporate into it additional code used by the X-Plane Direct plugin so that data ref values could be extracted from X-Plane and then presented on the SSD1306 displays themselves. Now at this point in the video I could easily spend half an hour or so telling you about all the hours I spent researching this and all of the problems that I had during my trial and error sessions just trying to make this work but you'll be pleased to note that I won't be doing that as it's just not a burden that I want to put you through. What I would say though is that there were two major findings along the way that eventually steered me in the right direction and the first of these related to microcontrollers. Basically I tested this project out using three different microcontrollers i.e. the Arduino Leonardo, the Uno and the Mega 2560 and surprisingly enough it was only the Mega 2560 that worked and when I looked into this a bit further it appeared to me that it was the inclusion of the X-Plane Direct plugin that caused this problem and nothing at all to do with my initial basic sketch code or the hardware being used. The second thing I found out was that if I tried to connect all three SSD1306 displays directly to the microcontroller with them sharing the controller's serial communication clock and data pins then all three displays were unfortunately seen as just one which frankly was about as much use as a chocolate fire guard. However after a bit of head scratching and interweb surfing I eventually found a special type of multiplexer that was actually capable of handling up to eight individual I2C type displays at the same time but more importantly it was able to handle each of these displays completely independently of one another which was exactly what I was looking for. Now as you know very well by now um, I'm neither a qualified electronics engineer or a computer programmer but uh, just by looking at the data sheet for the TCA9548A multiplexer I was able to design a wiring circuit for all of the components required which other than the uh, multiplexer itself were the three SSD1306 um, displays and also the uh, Arduino Mega2560 here and just by way of explanation in terms of the wiring circuit that I finally came up with um, if we deal with the multiplexer to begin with uh, this requires a 5 volt supply from the microcontroller here to the VIN terminal and uh, a ground return um, and the pin underneath it these two um, wires here the green and the yellow are for serial communication with the microcontroller so we've got uh, uh, serial data and serial clock terminals here which connect over to the corresponding serial data and serial clock uh, pin terminals on the uh, Mega 2560 that's uh, serial data is pin terminal 20 and serial clock is pin number uh, 21 um, now uh, for those of you that are really uh, interested in multiplexers um, then there's a lot of information out there data sheets and, and uh, all sorts of things that will tell you how this works I'm, I'm not going to get into that now because I simply don't know enough about it but uh, these three pin terminals alpha 0, alpha 1 and alpha 2 can either be connected to ground which is the way they're shown here or they can be connected to a 5 volt supply and uh, these pin terminals are referred to as the multiplexer uh, select or address selection pins that's right address selection pins um, but I, I, I don't know enough about it to go into any detail so if you're interested in that then maybe you could uh, look up look that up independently um, then we come down uh, here to the SSD 1306 displays three of them each of them requires a 5 volt supply and a ground return the red and black uh, cables there 
and the other terminals on here are the serial data or the green one is serial data and the yellow one is serial clock and they go back to the uh, multiplexer now this multiplexer is referred to an eight channel mux uh, which means it can handle up to eight devices like this all at the same time and uh, i don't know if you can make it out but these four red looking pins here uh, our channels uh, uh, zero and one and then we've got two three four five six and seven on this side so for each channel you've got a serial data pin and a serial clock pin um, and this device here the processor in the middle manages to unscramble all of this information and send it back or sorry send it, uh, information onto the displays as required um, and that's about it um, he says making it sound easy but it's anything but uh, but if you have any questions let me know or as I said before if you uh, have a look on the interweb I'm sure you'll find a load of information on it so here's the um, SSD 1306 display just as an example and at the top here you've got the uh, ground pin You've got the uh, VCC pin here, which is a 5 volt supply. And then we've got the serial clock pin and the serial data pin. Now these are very, very small displays. I think they're about 0.9 of an inch square. So very tiny. And even these little mounting holes are very small as well. So when you see my test board, um, you'll note that I haven't actually mounted them to the board. I've put them on my breadboard instead for ease of uh, connection. So on the other side, uh, you've got all the circuitry. And when you order these, um, I got three of these for about £10 sterling from Amazon. You know, the uh, pin headers here are already connected which is uh, saves you a little bit of soldering so that's that um, if i then bring this into play which is the uh, tca 9548a alpha um, i2c multiplexer bit of a mouthful um, these are i think these cost about one one pound each one pound sterling each and uh, you can see all of the pin terminals here and you'll notice the pin head has come uh, separate so if you want to use these then you do have to solder these on uh, both sides so we've got uh, the VIN pin which is your um, 5 volt supply ground um, serial data serial clock you've got a reset pin if you need it these are the two uh, sorry three alpha pins here alpha zero alpha one alpha two which you can connect to ground or to a five volt supply um, for the um, multiplexer um, address selection um, then you've got here uh, serial clock and serial data zero channel zero channel one two three four five six and seven and they are very small as well as you can see but uh, I just thought I'd show you those um, so you know that if you do buy them you have got a little bit of soldering to do so that's that and uh, we'll move on to the next stage okay so now it's time to start looking at the uh, Arduino sketch code um, but just as a reminder for the reasons that we've already discussed um, this sketch will only work with the Arduino Mega 2560 and it will only work with X-Plane 11 or 12 and that's primarily because of the X-Plane uh, Direct plugin that we're using. So at the start of the code we've got some libraries uh, to include as you can see here. I won't go through all of them but uh, if you do want to download in any of them then uh, you can get them from these addresses here two of them come from within the arduino ide software um, itself and then the others come from various third party uh, websites then we create an instance of uh, the xplain direct plugin and then we're going to create some space in memory for some data ref values and the data ref values that we're looking at in this case are for the oil temperature, oil pressure and engine speed. 
and we have two values for each of those one is uh, the value uh, in the current loop cycle of the code and the other is for the previous loop cycle of the code then we uh, define the uh, uh, height and width of the displays that we're using in pixels and that in, in our case is 128 wide by 64 high and we also initiate this particular library the Adafruit SSD 1306 library here next section um, is to basically initiate communication with the TCA 9584A uh, I2C multiplexer then we come down to the void setup section and we have serial begin uh, which initiates the serial monitor just in case we need to do some uh, code debugging and wire begin which uh, starts communication with the uh, I2C multiplexer in this whole section here we are basically setting up uh, a display on three multiplexer buses uh, bus number two number three and number four um, and also behind all of this uh, is a bit of an issue uh, with when you buy these um, SSD 1306 displays they are uh, they have a, a 0x3c um, address like these here hardwired or hard coded into them and you can't change it so this bit of code also uh, facilitates a bit of a get around as far as that's concerned so that the uh, multiplexer knows exactly which display it is um, communicating with this section here all three parts um, is pre-populating each of the displays on uh, multiplexer channels or bus 2, 3 and 4 with a little bit of information um, firstly it clears the display so there's no, no uh, rubbish left on it from the previous uh, from any previous uh, sketch codes that we've used it sets the text size at 2 um, I've tried the uh, altering this number um, if you make it number 1 then the text is very very small number two is a is a medium sized text and number three is a larger text and with that one you can hardly get anything on the display so uh, number two seems favorable then we set the text color as white um, I think these displays will only show white text anyway but I I guess this uh, line of code here is for um, other versions of that display where you can actually alter the text color then we're setting a cursor to a position of uh, zero which is the um, far left hand column and uh, uh, and row 10 so that's column zero row 10 and we want to print this uh, bit of text oil temp colon um, and that text will be printed at those coordinates there and this, this uh, bit of code display display is sending that information um, to the SSD 1306 on channel 2 and we just do the same thing again for the second display on channel 3 and the third display on channel 4 don't get too hooked up about this bit uh, this is just the uh, X-Plane direct plugin being initiated now we're expressing our interest in three uh, data rests within X-Plane itself and they are for oil temperature, um, oil pressure and engine speed. Oil temperature in degrees Celsius, pressure in pounds per square inch and engine speed as often expressed revs per minute RPM. Coming down to the void loop section now um, this is the first part for the display on channel 2 of the multiplexer and we're basically saying if the oil temperature on this current loop cycle of the code is different from what it was previously then something has changed the oil temperature has changed and if it has uh, we want to make sure that we print the print the new value on the display so we go through a similar uh, lines of code as we did before in the void setup section um, all of that and above is, is the same we 
a print a line with a space in it so you've got oil temperature colon the next row is a is got no text in it at all and then the row after that uh, we're printing the oil temp data ref value um, and you'll see this comma one and what that means is we're printing the oil temp value uh, with a single decimal place so for example uh, 120.5 something of that order because uh, when you look at the data editing tool in X-Plane these values for oil temp, oil pressure and revs per minute um, have a sort of a never ending decimal places in them so we want to we don't want to display all that we just want one decimal place and then we print after that the letter C for Celsius and display display just sends everything um, so that you can see the finished um, article then right down here we equalize uh, the current and previous data ref values values on this loop so that uh, it prevents unwanted and repeat data uh, being sent out of X-Plane you do exactly the same thing for the other two displays only this time we're talking about oil pressure and not oil temperature and we're on a different channel channel 3 um, and this one down here is uh, engine speed and we're displaying engine speed down here so hopefully that bit makes sense um, but if anybody's got any questions then please let me know okay so just to show you how flexible this arrangement is I've loaded a Zebo 737-800 into X-Plane and I'm going to be calling for three specific uh, data ref values all for engine number two uh, the first of those which will be shown on the left hand display that you can see in the video overlay will be rotational speed N1 the center display will show N2 rotational speed and the last one will show exhaust gas temperature for engine number two apologies if you can see any flickering uh, in the video overlay that's not the displays themselves I'm looking at them now and there's no flickering at all I think it's down to the refresh rate between the displays and the camcorder that I'm using to uh, film them um, you'll note that on the exhaust gas temperature display it's showing uh, 15 degrees Celsius and that's um, just uh, the ambient temperature of the engine as things are today I've also noticed that that 15 degree uh, value does flicker a bit like it did uh, for the engine RPM speed when we were looking at this in the Cessna Skyhawk uh, for the centre display the N2 rotational value there's no value at all at the moment but there will be um, that's just the way the sketch code is written um, um, so once I start spooling up that engine the values, a value there will, will appear so we've got our uh, APU running um, the APU bus has been selected we've got uh, fuel and we've also got uh, our APU bleed so I'm going to select ground here um, and the engine number two engine will start to spool up so if I change views uh, we can see uh, the N2 value uh, spooling up and when that gets to about 24% we will introduce fuel to the engine uh, just coming up 1920 that'll do so put fuel in and then you can see uh, N2 is spooling uh, now N1 is spooling and the exhaust gas temperature is increasing um, N1 will settle at around 19.8% and the N2 will settle around 59% and the exhaust gas temperature will um, be around just over, well, over 400 degrees and I don't know if you noticed it on the, on the video overlay they did start flickering there um, just a few seconds ago it's, uh, there it goes um, but I still think that's down to data ref values and not anything else I did originally try to put uh, the values for engine 1 and 2 on each of the displays but um, for some reason I haven't been able to work it out it doesn't uh, doesn't work properly so I abandoned that idea for now and just concentrated on the one engine okay so uh, that just gives you an idea of what you can do um, 
if there is a data ref value value in X plane, you can in all likelihood present it onto these displays. Um, and uh, don't forget that the um, I2C multiplexer that we're using will accommodate up to eight separate displays. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that you would be able to add uh, yet another multiplexer into the into the mix, and that will give you a further uh, eight displays, giving you 16 in all. And the more displays you have, of course, the more information that you can present. Okay, so there we are then, the end of yet another project that uh, you may even wish to have a go at yourselves at some point. I certainly enjoyed it, and more importantly, I once again learnt a lot from doing so. Hopefully then you also found the video enjoyable, interesting, and maybe somewhat inspiring. And if you did, then don't forget to smash the like button, and even consider subscribing so as not to miss anything in future. As always, and as I said before, if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll try to assist you where I can. Finally, I would like to thank you once again for your continued support of my channel and wish you all the good things that life has to offer. Ta-ta for now.